November 3. Oh, so yeah. All right. It moves. There are contacts in there that it hits. Be gentle with them. Be gentle, these are old. That one's from Otis Lab. This is a B A B C. A B C. This one moves farther. Hmm. Diesel DC rode an elevator that had this one where the bar comes out. Mm hmm And you, oh, that one. Yeah, okay, that's not moving. Oh. It, it, that one's supposed to, the bar, uh, the bar is supposed to move, tilt like mm -hmm. the others I showed you. When the rope is cut, the, um, that what? Well, this one would uh, use a governor. Yeah. And when the uh, governor pulled up on the rope, it would pull the uh, brakes together. Oh, I see. Oh, did you miss this? The whole elevator machinery right here. That's the elevator machine usually found one floor yeah. above the top of the elevator. Well, this one's actually in the basement. Yeah. There's four usually this there. one's backwards because it would be in the basement. Rowan, how does the floor selector work? Where's that? Uh, it moves with the elevator, and then it hits these switches as yeah. the elevator goes up. Okay. And uh, it tells the elevator when to slow down? Yeah. So it's geared to this, so uh, when I get the elevator to the right place, I can adjust the position of the switch, and when the elevator reaches that place, it will correspond to this. This will spin as it turn very slowly as the elevator yes. is rising. Oh, I see. It's connected right here by this uh, 90 degree gear. And this is the uh, brake right here. Yeah. Holds everything steady and then... Right. And you actually need to apply power to release the brake. When the power is taken off, the brake goes on. And you've got your electric motor. And what's this one? This is another one. There should be a break up here. Yeah. I don't have one, but right. it's also allow you to turn it. And as you can see, it goes through the worm gear, and it will yeah. turn this. And th would this one be found at the above or below the elevator? It could be put either way, depending how you want to deal with it. Yeah. Go ahead and just say I'm turn it. You should have um, some kind of wrench to turn it, make it turning it easier. Yeah, they sometimes got a hand wheel. Oh, well, we put a detector in here. Yeah. Ah, alright. Is that the detector? Yep. See how that turns when you uh, turn it? Yes. So here's the uh, controller. You never touch one of these when it's installed because the deadly voltage is in here, but there's no deadly voltage in there, so I get always touching it. Okay. You know. And then, bam, and then a big spark would fly. Oh, they shut when the floor is selected? Well, it's a magnetic switch because you don't want to have huge, huge voltage carriers going up to those little teeny tiny buttons. Right. The teeny buttons control the uh, current that goes to the electromagnet, which is much smaller. And when the yes. electromagnet is activated, it pulls these two, which gets a huge honking current down. Right. Yes. And this, this you... has to do with acceleration, maybe, or slowly starting and stopping the motor. Uh, Motor controls are very uh, finicky, and they had a lot of trouble back then trying to figure out how to control them. But yeah, I think these were the floors. So it had three floors? Yeah, and I guess maybe these were the safeties? I don't know. And then the up and down. Oh, okay. And the one he drum. 
Like once, um, I believe someone, they ran an elevator by pushing, someone ran the elevator by pushing the um, buttons yeah, in the machine room. Yeah, commanding, it's like, so it lines up. There's a resistor grid, so you can, uh, That's an enunciator. It should have, it would have been nice if they had one at the uh, Fitzwillis building, but it yeah. does. Have had one like that. Is, you know, when somebody, get, like, on one of the uh, so fours pushes I, the button. To so see if I have the button. elevator on B and someone pushes on on three, then I'll see that. Or, yeah, the elevator operator, I think. It, so three down, it'd probably go like this. Three yeah. up like this. You know, yeah. somebody on the third floor wants to go up. Right. They had that something like that on 78 Main Street, but it was yes. more of a button panel. Oh, I see. You can see the brushes there. That's how the electricity gets to them, uh, to these coils. Or, yes. And a little spring I'm always pushing the brushes down. Eventually, they wear out, and you need to fix them. Oh, I see. If you took them out, you could probably even draw them like on paper or something. Wow. Right oh, that's interesting. Brushes, see where they are. And does it usually only run one way? I don't know. That might be a generator or something. I don't know exactly what it is. A motor or a generator are very similar. Yeah, this is a pretty odd design. But you can obviously see the brushes in that motor too, for the more traditional motor. See the brushes there to... Yeah. And you can even see that's blackened because it's worn. Yes. Wow. Oh, they upgraded it, so they don't have a whole elevator. They have quite a few things from it. Let's see. Oh, the model. Oh, the Lego elevator. Here it's. Oh. I believe someone built a model working elevator like that, but they had the push buttons for it. Mm. It had a con con small controller like an elevator would have. Mm hmm. Kids' toys and all the escalator. Wow. Like rats or something. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. Here's a nice elevator diagram. Context here and pulls these relays in. Ah, uh, oh yeah. And, and on the other side, here's here. this has three spools, and one of these is the is the door circuit. They're mm -hmm. pulling when the doors close up, and these are all tool parts. Ah, oh, all right. So these four columns over there. And uh, oh, so sorry. If you have this on inspection, I think you could actually run this off the board too. With the up and the down here, which must have been pretty dangerous. <laughs> um, I've seen videos of those things. They like to shoot sparks when they disengage. Yeah, this came from Mary Baker Eddy's uh, beautiful mansion. Wow. It's like a castle, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, this is a picture of her home right there. Wow. It's really a beautiful home. It's four stories high. Built back in 19, 1908, and this was installed. She died in 1910, and so uh, it was never really used. So, uh, so you see, Sam, when that thing turns, it hits that. The wire goes up here. Yes. And then it turns on this relay. Yes. Or actually, it turned it off, wouldn't it? Correct. Yeah, so the relay would be on, and then when that thing hits like number three, yeah. So it shut off the relay. Yeah. Everything would stop. 
That's actually the sling from the elevator right there from her home. Ah. And they keep the original car. They had to take them out. They oh. were they were uh, they were really never inspected and registered to the state. Mm. So when they went to uh, modernize the, the the home and they're making it into a museum right now. They're keeping all the woodwork and they're yeah. keeping all the carpets and Are you getting the car or did they take that away? No, they saved some things. They wanted to, you know, they, they couldn't resurrect it and get it running again like grandfather did, you know what I mean? Because they never registered so they, the elevator basically must have sat for years and years and years. Because she passed away right after it was installed and there was a bunch of people that lived in her home. So I don't know if they're in the elevator in the house. I don't know if it's registered. An old sanitarium tan-powered. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And I guess they had their friend help them get it running again. Well, they got a lot of old elevators right in this town right here. Yeah, you were blessed too. Even uh, North Hampton has them too. Downtown North Hampton has old elevators yeah, too. Yeah, they got rid of them. That's a, I'm still, have you ever contacted the guy about that cage elevator in North Hampton? I have not. Well, I should too, man. Yeah. I don't want to throw it away. That was a cool elevator. That was a cool elevator. Right across that elevator. Ball governor. When the wheel turns too fast, the elevator moves too fast. If the elevator moves faster, the balls get are pushed out by centrifugal force. Then, if it goes too fast, it, the balls, the full length, the full tilt hits a switch and it'll stop. What's this thing here? Oh, that's a small winch. Same, same thing, but in a different way. These are the, um, a fly ball type. That's the fly ball type. Operated dumbly. You'll pull those ropes to move it. One way goes up, the other way goes down. I can't film those things too closely. Those are drawings from the um, of the various um, early elevators. Uh, 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 um, elevator prototypes. Oh, he's got put put a gate. Right here, that would be found on um on a, on a cage dove. Elevator wrench, and uh, um, I'm not sure what that one is. Yes. Where? Yes. Various blocks. Oh yeah, you pull the rope one way to go up, another way to go down. Yeah. Uh, I forgot my tripod. Other, um, other ways we, we, we could have put my um.
He has an overbalance, so it's easier going up. Wait, what's the overbalance? The kind of weight weighs more than the car. Okay. Oh, let's see. He's trying to fix the counterweight. Well, you can take out weights and add them. Okay. Ideally, the from what I've heard, somewhere I may, may have read that the counterweight should be half the weight of a car. Yeah, about 30% of the full load. We've got a car sling right... Well, actually, this is basically the elevator. No size or anything. There's probably rope power, right? Or yeah. No, not rope power. Just Rope. Oh, okay. And it has the arch, like the one that, at the uh, in Shelburne Falls to open and close the trap doors above them and below it. Yeah, sidewalk elevators work this way. Yeah. Uh, and there's some warning chains. If you feel these coming down, you better move your head. I think we got uh, Here we go. So th they do these for the pull the rope ones. Yeah. And they're beads in them. I think maybe if you've seen that. So the rope goes through. Yeah, and if you want to stop at four, yeah. and then when the bead comes, it will catch a bead and then pull it and shut off the elevator. Okay. So the bead acts like a brake, sort of? Well, you, you, when you move the uh, rope, you yeah. turn a switch up top. Yes. And you always uh, pull it the opposite direction you want to go because they use the uh, movement of the elevator to shut it off. Right. But it gets to the very top of the really big bead, the elevator hits it, pulls the rope, and then it pulls the uh, switch to off. Right. But if there's multiple floors, you know, when you're getting near the floor, you just go like this, and they'll catch one of the smaller beads, and then they'll yes. pull the rope and stop. Oh, I see. And there's multiple ones here, and then you can see different. So. You can't push it because it's just resting there. Right. What well, has that that one you tried to push has that rotary dial? Yep, there's some rotary dial fixtures here. Ah, oh, there we are. Oh, I see. I guess this was the uh, 